One in three Americans is now obese. Millions more are overweight, and the blame is often laid at the individual. Lack of self-discipline, perhaps. But now, one doctor is pointing the finger directly at another culprit: sugar. Now we all know that too much sugar is a bad thing, but according to this man, well, even a spoonful can be the start of serious trouble, as John Donvan now reports. So you kind of look around this place with、um, X-ray eyes for sugar. Yeah, I do. You spot the sugar. A man at war with sugar, but strolling with him through a place like San Francisco's Pier 39 with all this food. Well, if the attraction's the sugar, then I think we've got a problem. Can be at times. You know, chocolate is a medicinal. Well, a bit of a downer. The problem is when you add the sugar.、Uh-huh. Because we love sugar, don't we? Most of us. And now, soft drink companies are pulling pop from schools—the really sugary stuff. And is that what Dr. Robert Lustig wants? Not really, he says, because it's not enough. Lustig is a pediatric endocrinologist treating kids with obesity. When he began asking himself, "How did kids get this way, and what's the real key to America's obesity epidemic?" That's, he says, when he struck on it. So you walk around these places, and you sort of see.、Uh, The nutritional equivalent of opium dens, kind of, sort of. Because what's Listen, making us fat, he says,、breakfast. and our kids and fat, is something in sugar, a molecule. It's called fructose. Fructose is a poison. Wow, on many levels. One being that this YouTube lecture he calls the bitter truth is an hour and a half long and packed with fructose-related graphics like this. And yet he's garnered a quarter million hits. Perhaps because by the end he offers what sounds like such a satisfyingly simple answer to the question: How do we get so fat all of a sudden? Fructose. Is the cause of the current epidemic. It's the cause of the current epidemic of metabolic syndrome, and that is fixable if we chose to fix it. That's another wow. One molecule, and it's there in almost everything that comes with a sweet taste. There's sugar in an orange. There's sugar in an apple. At some point, sugar is good for us. Is sugar good for us? Do you need sugar to live? Is it necessary? Is there any, even one, reaction in your body that actually requires fructose? Zero. Yet one more wow: his idea to really deal with kids who drink in the sugar that's in soda. Show me your ID, right? Okay, so the idea: 15-year-old walks into a convenience store, says, "Want to buy a can of Coke?" Cashier says, "Show me your ID." You want to card kids for Coke? Absolutely. If a parent wants their kid to have a coke, let them buy it for him. That'll cut、This、down on all. This drink is rated R. Yeah. Yeah. How about that idea defies common sense? The words of the American Beverage Association, which thinks that getting soft drinks out of school and more calorie info on the cans does make a real difference. But just because Lustig、uh-huh. is so deadpan enthusiastic about everything he says, and a smart debater, he is pretty good company for a talk and a walk with his kids in tow, and they're certainly with the program. Usually we have like fruit for dessert. We、uh-huh. don't. We only have dessert after dinner. Usually, maybe on the weekends is when we have our sweet things like chocolate and ice cream. Does that drive you crazy? Are you thinking about sweet things all the time? Or... <laughs> the question, though, isn't whether Lustig is good company. It's whether he knows what he's talking about. Audrey Erickson seriously wonders. Consumers should know that fructose is a sugar, and a sugar is a sugar. Whether it comes from cane or corn or beet, and that Mother Nature gave us fructose in all the fruits and vegetables that we eat, but also in combination with another simple sugar, glucose. That has high fructose corn syrup in it. And yeah, you know what they say about it? Like what? This is an ad created by Audrey Erickson's group, the Corn Refiners Association, and in a funny way, they agree with Dr. Lustig, who says there is no difference between high fructose corn syrup and sugar. But Lustig says the level of obesity in America began to climb around the very time that the food industry started using lots of high fructose corn syrup, because he says it's just so cheap and so readily available, and therefore so everywhere. 
I went to our local supermarket here in San Francisco and I checked out 32 brands of commercially available bread on the shelves. 31 of them had high fructose corn syrup. But Lustig says that all sugars are bad for you. High fructose corn syrup, fructose, even fruit juice, the fruit juice that will still be sold in schools. So you see kids with juice, juice boxes running around in the playground, what does that do to you? It's a disaster. It does the same thing. It makes no difference if it's a juice box or a soda in terms of the fructose load. In fact, juice is 1.8 grams of fructose per ounce. Soda is 1.7 grams you, of fructose per ounce. When we say juice, ounce. you're not talking about juice that's juiced up with sugar. You're talking about juice that's squeezed out of an orange and if it were as fresh as, as, as the, the dew on the rose. They have threw away the fiber. The juice is the bad part of the fruit. The juice is nature's way of getting you to eat your fiber. What is not in dispute is that there is a lot of fructose, or sugar in general, in so much of what we're now eating. Everyone seems to think yogurt is good for you, yeah. and you, yogurt is healthy. But this has 27 grams of sugar wow. for this yogurt. Wow. So is it worth it? This has well, this 27 is, grams of sugar, too, yeah. per serving. It's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. Lustig says you will likely get fat on this stuff even if you eat the ones labeled low-calorie or low-fat because the insidious thing about fructose is this, he says, it fools you into eating more. Remember snack wells? Mm -hmm. Two grams of fat down, 13 grams of carbohydrate up, four of which were sugars. And why was sugar put in? To make it taste good? If you take fat out, it tastes like cardboard. Food industry knows that. They got to substitute it with something to make it palatable. Problem is, they put it in because palatability equals you buy more. So as a and it's not just a liking, it's a needing. So you're never satisfied. Why? Well, Lustig cites research that he says shows increasing doses of fructose overload the liver, which in turn confuses the brain about a chemical we all start producing when we eat called leptin. Normally rising leptin levels tell the brain we've had enough to eat. So your brain thinks you're hungry, because if your brain can't get the leptin signal, that's starvation. Feels like starvation. Feels like starvation. Study after study has shown that. Every time we have focused on one particular aspect of the diet, whether it be fats, carbohydrates, and now the, the latest one is fructose, every time we focused on one aspect of the diet and said, aha, that must be what is causing obesity, we've been wrong. Cardiologist James Rippey consults for the Corn Refiners Association and has done research funded by PepsiCo. In fact, there is abundant evidence to suggest that it is, is our own habits, namely the overconsumption of calories from all sources, which has led to the obesity epidemic in both children and adults in our country. We all know that we're eating a whole lot more than we used to. And, you know, on the surface, that certainly makes sense, and that's what everybody says, a calorie's a calorie. You eat more than you burn, you gain weight, and it's not so simple. Calories are not just calories. Calories are not just calories. and it's not what you eat, it's what you do with what you eat that counts. And what you do with fructose is particularly egregious. Waffle cones. Oh, funnel cakes. That is the, uh, you know, that's the essence of obesity right there. Oh boy, here he goes. The highest sugar and the highest fat concentrated in one spot and then throw the ice cream on top, you've got it all. And that is an obesogenic nightmare. Shame then that they taste so good. I'm John Donvan for Nightline in San Francisco.